right, this video I'm talking about seven things that I wish I knew before I made my build. These things is vital because I made my build and I realized, okay, because there's differences from last year, there's some similarities and some stuff I overlooked. Before I get into it, if you guys are new to the channel, of course, be sure to subscribe. We're doing 2K18 everything. I'm close to 91 overall with my player. Hopefully I get there soon. I'll drop a video on that. But let's get straight into number one. Number one is a pretty simple and an obvious one that we all wish we knew. Now at launch, when we were building our players, we couldn't see the actual attribute stats for the individual attributes. So when you were upgrading defense, you didn't know what a specific attribute was seeing a plus three or a plus two, whatever the case was. So this meant that if you were going to upgrade ball control, you didn't know if you were going to hit 75, which meant you didn't know if you were going to get those pro animations. You didn't know if you were going to hit 90. You didn't know if you were going to get the elite animations. There's so much that depended on that we didn't know when we were initially making our build. And this year, for whatever reason, we couldn't find out all that information on the prelude. So that's just first things first is finally that was patched into the game. That's vital. The second thing is something that changed after the first three days and that you don't need to be a pure sharp to shoot effectively. The first three days, I liked it. We're talking about a skills gap. Literally people on the park were afraid to shoot because nobody had their jumpers down the first few days, but I did. Y'all know I dropped my jump shot video. I'ma link that, yo. The prime jumper I drop, I'm telling you, is lit. I still haven't found a jumper better than that in all my tests since the game dropped. But regardless, if you were a pure sharp, you had an advantage because you could shoot semi-consistently. I was shooting consistently. If you were another build, you had to be pretty, pretty good with your shot just so you could shoot the ball. And I liked it. It was a good balance. The percentages were down, but if you knew what you were doing, you had your cue and your release on point, you were hitting. Now, that's just me because I like a skills gap. The casual players were losing their minds. So Mike Wang changed the sliders and literally made it easy for any build to shoot. So just like it was last year, if you're a pure slasher, you can hit from the corner consistently if you have your release down. If you're a pure lockdown, you can hit from the corner if you have your release down. So just like last year, you'll have pure sharps at the hash marks, and you'll have the players that can't shoot as effectively because their attributes are like at a 40 or a 60 on the corners, and you can run that pick and roll on Pro-Am. You can do a similar thing if you're running threes on park. This year, there's no fours on park. Hopefully that changes with the Ruffles three point four point thing that's about to drop, I think, this Sunday. But I'm trying to say I don't have to be a pure sharp. I I could be like a, a primary playmaker, secondary sharpshooter, and shoot just as effectively. Just I won't have Hall of Fame limitless range, but I'll still hit all my shots. That way I could be fast and get to my spots, making it easier for me to get off my shots. And if I'm shooting with the same effectiveness, I'll be able to hit. See, that's only like if you know what you're doing though, because if you don't know what you're doing, just stick with the pure shot. This year, post defense is suspect. It couldn't be more suspect. If you're a post scorer this year, you should have a blast. For whatever reason, it's difficult to pick up on opponents down in the paint this year. There'll be times where I'm right here and a guy will walk like almost through me and I'm like, I couldn't get an animation to pick him up. So if you're a post, if you're not a post defender and you're going up against a post scorer, GG, you will get hit with drop steps all year. You will get hit with those hop shots right out the post, the post fit, whatever the case is, I'm telling y'all right now, I've been playing with a couple post players, you will be dominated if you aren't a defensive archetype. It's actually hilarious how effective they are this year. And I, it's mostly because the, the defensive mechanics in the paint are so weird. The fourth thing for me was I was playing on Wi-Fi. A few days into launch, one of my buddies told me PS4 Pro has less lag and frame drops than the PS4. I tried it out, but when I was transferring my information, I was, uh, I did, you have to do it through Wi-Fi, right? So I did it through Wi-Fi, and I just found out literally the other day I've been playing on Wi-Fi. So I hopped back on pro i'm in park and for me i had to retest literally all of my jumpers because with less latency i wanted to see if they can now hit so i'm in the process of going through all that basically to say this if you're playing on wi-fi find a way to play on ethernet you need to be connected i'm telling you it makes a massive difference especially if you're playing on a giant tv you're already gonna have bad response rates if you're also playing on wi-fi gg trying to respond I could be a pure sharp and I will break you down every time if you're playing on a giant TV with Wi-Fi. You just won't react fast enough. No matter what you try and do, you'll always be late to the punch. This, Even if you react the split second you see me move, because of the delay between the controller to the PS4, the PS4 to the server now that you're on Wi-Fi, it's, and then the TV adds to it. Just don't do that to yourself. Next one is weight. Weight doesn't matter as much when you're playing 2K. Last year, if you increase or decrease the weight of your player, it made a pretty significant difference. But this year, I could be a 160 pound sharpshooter 
or a 210 pound sharpshooter and I will still have the same level of ball control. So I, I'm sure weight affects strength, but the fact that it doesn't affect ball control as much this year is huge, which means you can make your player a lot bigger, which is gonna help in those situations where you're getting blown by. You need strength to muscle up and keep defenders in front of you, but it's not any significant change for me to wanna give up strength that comes with being a bigger weight. The next one is, if you're playing by yourself, there's gonna be a different build than if you're playing with your friends. When I'm playing by myself and I'm a pure sharpshooter on the pro app, and they put Joe Shimo over here at point guard, who can't find an open teammate if his life depended on it, I just wanna shoot myself. It's, it's nothing worse than me having to hop on the mic and explain to our team how to play point guard. And it happens often. I literally, almost all the prime games I play are by myself. And sometimes it'll be a subscriber. And I'm like, my guy, if you're a subscriber and you subscribe to the channel, how could you be this bad, bro? Cause you be missing wide open shots. And I'm like, yo, did you watch the jump shot video? Cause that's not my jump shot and my jump shot hits. <laughs> So if you're playing by yourself, it makes sense to have some sort of ball handling because trust me, when you're playing with buckets on your team, you're gonna wanna be able to move around and get the ball open. Last thing you wanna do as a pure sharp is to rely on Joe Schmo at point guard to try and find you open. That being said, when I'm playing on a team, there's nothing more I'd rather be than a pure sharpshooter. You're telling me I could just chill at the limitless range at the hash and just wait for a pick and roll to get me open, wait for somebody to play help. You're telling me I could just stand there all possession and still be effective? Man, I'll take that any day. All I gotta do is hit my shots when I'm open, I'll take that any day. And the last one I touched on earlier is the PS4 Pro versus PS4. Now, if you don't know, the PS4 Pro has better hardware than the PS4. I'm sure it's gonna be similar for the Xbox Scorpio. Basically what I'm trying to say is on 2K18, and I'm sure this was the case for previous 2Ks as well, is the game is optimized better on the PS4 Pro than it's on the PS4. So there's people that are like, I can't even play on the playground because there's an insurmountable amount of frame drops or lag or whatever the case is. I had those same issues. I switched on to the PS4 Pro and I never had those issues. So I know it's not an ideal situation. You're not really trying to drop that kind of money unless, unless you're balling in that case, are you still trying to drop that kind of money? But if you have one in your house, like I had two PS4s or you, maybe your brother has, sister has another PS4. If you use a PS4 Pro in your house, you need to grab that one. That's the one you need to be playing 2K with. So that's about it, man. Those are all the things I wish I knew. Now, I got super lucky. I didn't know my attributes. There was so much we didn't know about the game this year and I made a build and it actually turned out to be the best build in the game. Hey, man, shout out to me for doing my research. But there's gonna be people watching this like, yo, Agent, I made this build or that build and I wish I knew about this or that and it's just unfortunate. I still haven't gotten all my ball control attributes on my player yet, so I don't even have 75 ball control, which is kind of frustrating. And I'm playing my ass off, man. I'm almost to 91. So anyway, if you guys enjoyed, man, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I'm gonna catch y'all later, man. I'm out. Peace.